try this. Oops. Today we're gonna to be checking out the EAP670 that TP Link sent over. Hang on a minute, this is the uh, 660 HD. Sorry about that. The EAP670 that TP Link sent over. And we'll get into all the details, we'll crack it open, we'll do some speed tests, we'll see what's in the box, all that jazz. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off by checking out what's in the box and then we'll get into the specs and then some tests. What's in the box? Of course we have the 670 packed away in here very nicely and a very nice bag, I might have to say myself. And aside from the 670 access point itself, we have a quick installation guide along with some other verbiage. We have uh, mounting hardware included. This is a plate as well as uh, mounting material or hardware for ceiling and or wall. And then we have the power adapter itself. Now that we have an idea of what this device comes with, we can go ahead and talk about some of the specs. Now I'm gonna go into all of the details about this. You guys can read the spec page on your own if you wish. But the big takeaway or big takeaways are that this specific device is capable of supporting the 160 megahertz channels. Those are DFS channels. So what that means is that now you have much higher bandwidth available to you should you need it over Wi-Fi, with the risk being that if you live near weather, weather radar stations, airports, military bases, those DFS channels may shut off temporarily while those radar beams are hitting your house or whatever being used. And so that is one downside to DFS, but I think for the vast majority of people, that's not a problem. The great thing about DFS channels is those are typically not supported on most consumer hardware, meaning that if you live in an apartment complex or somewhere that's highly congested with other Wi-Fi signals, um, you can now be outside of those ranges or those channels and you can get pretty solid speeds. And that's not a problem I have here in my house. So that's not something I have to worry about, and I don't use DFS because of that. Now, this is a Wi-Fi 6 cable device, much like the EAP660 HD and the 610V2. It also has a 2.5 gig gigabit port on the rear, that's PoE Plus or 802.3 AT compliant. And it does also have a power adapter that comes in the box, obviously, and you can power the device with that as well but we won't be needing that because we have a 2.5 gigabit switch. But just because I have a 2.5 gigabit switch doesn't mean I'll be able to hit two gig speeds because like I said, this is a Wi-Fi 6 device, meaning that the most theoretical bandwidth you can pull in a single stream is somewhere around 1,000 megabits per second to maybe 1,200 megabits per second. And this device, by the way, will do 1,000 megabit transfers um, should you need to. But basically you need to be pretty close, like within five feet and from what I've seen. And even so, they're not like, you're not going to be pegged at one gigabit per second. It's mostly going to vary between 900 and one gig, 900 megabits and one, one gigabit. But that's the point. So let's do a quick size comparison between this beastie and its other cousins and uh, some competition, shall we? So here is the 670, the 6. 60 HD, they are basically identical on the outside. We'll crack open the two of them to see where the differences may lie. This is not gonna stand up on its own. This is the 610 V2. Try that. Oops, we need something heavier. One second, try that again. So I'll have to hold the ubiquity one because it's not gonna stand on its own. I don't have anything to hold it up. So 670, 610 V2, 660 HD. Uh, U6LR by from Ubiquity. As you can tell, uh, they are obviously pretty large, almost as uh, almost the same diameter as the U6LR, but um, much more thick. So let's get a different angle so I can show you how thick they are. Get a lovely cake going here. This is a three-layered cake. I guess technically four because this is where the topping would be. But as you can tell, the EA. 660 and 670 are pretty thick boys. A lot of people wouldn't find that appealing in their homes as TP-Link has heard you and that's why they created the 610 to be a small profile, much smaller than the U6LR, mind you. And it is pretty thick, almost a lot thicker than the, actually it looks like it's a little bit thinner than the U6LR, uh, but obviously hard to beat Ubiquiti's design the choices here. Wife approved for sure. We have one in our house. Uh, that is approved. Didn't really care too much about the design of this, but overall not an eyesore in her opinion because it is up on the ceiling and in an inconspicuous place. 
but the 610 is definitely very appealing. So as you can tell, there's the sizes, uh, pretty, pretty big, but you know, this is meant for businesses, not something you stick in your home. Or I guess you could also use it if you're a prosumer, which most of us are that are watching this, this kind of content anyway, right? Moving on, to gain access to the internals, there are a total of five screws that need to be moved, one hidden underneath this sticker as you can see here. So keep that in mind as you are taking this apart. If you are someone like me who doesn't like their stickers to be destroyed uh, while, I guess, disassembling a product, then you may not want to disassemble it. And that's why I'm doing it for you because these devices are not my like long-term, I'm gonna keep these forever devices. Well, I guess I will keep them forever, but not something I plan on if they lose some value or whatever, I'm not too worried about it, I guess, uh, because TP-Link did provide them. So it's a lot different when you buy things for yourself. Now, removing the shell is not incredibly difficult if you have the right tools. Uh, however, it does require some finesse and a little bit of effort because there are clips that are holding everything in place. This is the 660HD disassembled. And let's go ahead and carefully disassemble the 670HD. Or that's not right. This is just the 670, not high density, 670. All right, so as I mentioned before, there is a screw hidden underneath this sticker. So we are just going to very carefully kind of pick away at the sticker as best as we can. So we can start peeling it. And there really is no easy way to do this. Basically, once you remove the sticker, it is permanently damaged. As you can tell, it's leaving a lot of residue. But my goal is to at least leave this stuff intact, the MAC address and information about it, because I may need that one day. Just poke a hole in there, remove the middlemost screw, and then there's four more screws on the sides. All right, then as I've been sort of shown and mentioned earlier, we're just gonna slip this pry tool in here to get inside the edges. Oops. This one is a lot tougher than the 660, I'll tell you that. All right, just use a little brute force on that. Here on the left is the 660 HD. You can see that it has four antennae here for both the two gig band and the five gig band, which is great. So if you have a four antennae device, you're gonna get all the throughput available to Wi-Fi 6. And here is the 670. And I think the colors, so this is a lot, a little darker than this and the labeling is much better, I would say. All right, let's get this removed so we can see the underside. Absolutely massive heat sink underneath there. Very cool. Trying not to be very careful with the tape that is holding the antennae down. Heat sink on the bottom as well. 2.5 gig port. Pretty awesome. I'm gonna show you how to properly remove this and not the anten the, the antennae uh, board as well. So there's two screws that are holding the entire, comp uh, I guess, PCB, antenna, all this, all the stuff to the chassis. And these are these two screws here. So once we remove those two, we should be free to actually remove the chassis and the PCB. So very, very similar design. Massive heat sinks on both sides. Uh, 2.5 gigabit port, of course, reset button, bunch of capacitors and jazz. Uh, I, okay, I wasn't gonna do it because I still need to test with this. So hopefully I don't damage anything, but let's go ahead and remove the antennae board. Now this isn't PCB. This is uh, some kind of other material. Absolutely massive heat sink. This one actually, so the 660HD has a like crooked, I'm guessing CPU, I don't know what's actually underneath the heat sink, but it was crooked if you remember. Everything here is much more uniform. And I love the app, the black finish on this thing. Absolutely amazing. It's too bad we'll never see it. 
All right, let's get it back together. With the teardowns out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about how I did the speed test. So with the 670 HD, I centrally mounted it in my house. And as you can see from the very terrible sketch in front of you, uh, my house is surrounded in brick and I did locate the 670 uh, roughly in the foyer area. And I stood about five feet into the living room and then 20 feet into the living room, then 50 feet, which brought me outside and then 70 feet, which basically puts me all the way at the fence area um, behind my house because it's really far away. And of course, for, for part of the testing too, I have a Wi-Fi 6E capable laptop and this has four antennae, which is very important for uh, the maximum bandwidth that you can expect to get. So. We did all of our speed tests using iPerf on a single stream and I ran tests five times in each spot. So that's at the five foot distance, at the, at the 20 foot distance, 50 and 70, just using the regular five gigahertz 80, I'm sorry, five gigahertz band with a 80 megahertz bandwidth. And then I did all the tests again, <laughs> but this time on the DFS channels with uh, 160 megahertz bandwidth. Um, so that's how I did the testing. Now let's go and take a look at the results from all of that. For the first range speed test, we did it at five feet or approximately five feet, not exactly, but about five feet away. And we were seeing some pretty good speeds from all the devices. Uh, the 670 obviously came out on top, but only barely. And just a reminder, this is on the five gigahertz, 80 megahertz, uh, five gigahertz band, 80 megahertz frequency. Hey! Ugh. It's kind of weird to say. Nonetheless, uh, it did come out on top, but only barely. And the 660 HD uh, did respectable as well. And so did the 610, no complaints as far as I'm concerned from either of these. For the next test, we're at the 20 foot range and uh, the 670 and 660 HD traded some blows here, I would say, but honestly, they were very similar in their performance in, rea in the real world, I would say. Um, I know that I did only average these five times, but both of these devices do an extremely similar job uh, just from the kind of testing I did around the house as well that we're not going to get into. And the 610 V1, or sorry, V2 also did a pretty respectable job at 20 feet. At the 50 foot range, things get pretty interesting here. The 670 in this case loses out while the 660 HD comes out of the head and the 610 starts to drop off pretty, pretty large here. Not really sure what's going on with this particular test. I did this test more than 10 times. I've probably tested that range, that 50 foot range, maybe like 30, 40 times. It kept getting similar results. And finally, after being outside and being extremely cold, I said, screw it. Um, that's just, these. I'm just gonna go or give it another five uh, speed tests. And then the results I get are what I'm gonna post. So again, uh, I, I think, I think it depends on like your build and stuff, but I think it should be similar to the 660 HD. And I don't know exactly why I was getting different results here. Now looking at the 70 foot range, we can again see that the 670 is just trailing behind a little bit uh, to the 660 HD, but only barely. And then the 610 actually kind of jumps up a little bit and starts performing well. These results were a little strange as well. Um, I did rerun the 670 won several times here as well and could not get anything closer than what you're seeing on the chart to the 660 HD. Uh, the 660 HD did come out ahead on that. And then the 610 V2 did surprisingly well. Don't know why it did better. I'm guessing there's just more interference at the 50 foot range um, than there is elsewhere. So moving on. Finally, we have the DFS test, DFS channel test at the 160 megahertz bandwidth. And this is where the 670 really shows what it's got, I would say. So at the five foot range, you could see that we were hitting 973 megabits per second down and 856 megabits per second up. And the 20 foot range was extremely respectable as well. And then when we hit the 50 foot range, while we did do better than what we did on the five gigahertz band, we basically took a, a blow. We lost about half of the bandwidth available. And then when we got out to the 70 foot range, I'd say we did very well there. It's a very respectable bandwidth, I would say, that's available to it. And again, the DFS channels are kind of dangerous to use depending on where you live, but um, for whatever reason, they did a really good job at those distances. And 
yeah, so <laughs> take take all that information ho however you will. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video. I guess some final remarks is I did end up rerunning a lot of the tests between the 660 HD and the 670 which forced me to take, unmount them from the ceiling and remount them each time because I wasn't happy with the results I was seeing, but there wasn't really anything better for me to show you guys. And after maybe like five to six hours of uh, running speed tests in iPerf, just back to back to back to back, I just got exhausted with it and I uh, was like, here are the results, take them, take them for what you will. And and that leads me to the whole reason why I don't like Wi-Fi because while I do know that both of these devices can do gigabit um, when you're extremely close to them, it's just so hard to to consistently maintain those speeds because of the nature of Wi-Fi and all of the things that the radios have to uh, penetrate, you know, walls and bricks and, you know, there's windows and all sorts of other things in the way. And so that's why I will always be like a hardcore ethernet or fiber, a dedicated line person. That's that's where I am. That's why I have so many ports all over the house. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you TP-Link for sending out the 670 and all the other equipment. And I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Did I say that? All right, whatever. See you guys all next time. Peace. bandwidth.